Brandon Darty, and welcome to this week's edition of the Coach Wright Show. With me today is Gibbons head football coach Stephen Wright. Crusaders suffered their first loss of the season last week at Cary, 47 to 26 loss. Coach, what do you think went wrong in that game? Well, it, it's as simple as turnovers. We turned the ball over five times. They didn't turn it over at all, and uh, we just ended up putting our our defense in a hole, and obviously costing our offense opportunities to score. So. Um, Turnovers was uh, what was the name of the game, and unfortunately, we were on the wrong end. You know, you only lost one game last season, and it was in the playoffs, so an undefeated regular season last year. So a lot of these guys, they really haven't experienced many losses. What do you think the team's reaction was after the loss? Do you think these guys just kind of had to take it with stride and, you know, losing for the first time in a long time? I, well, yeah, I think so, and I, I hope hopefully it was a wake-up call for us. Um, it is difficult. This is the battle that you face when you've had uh, – you know, a, a few years of success, it's one thing to, to battle to get to the top of the mountain. It's another thing to stay there. And uh, right now our challenge is figuring out a way to stay there um, and not become complacent in the process. You know, two years ago in your second game as Gibbons head football coach, you know, you lost 19 nothing to carry. And then after that, you won something like nine games in a row to finish the regular season with one loss. It, did you mention that to the guys this week? Yeah. that that was mentioned uh, on a couple of occasions. Um, I think a lot of our guys, they were, uh, they were pretty down about the loss. And, uh, and uh, you know, I just reminded them it's not the end of the world. It's an opportunity to grow and to learn as a team. And um, we referenced uh, the experience two years ago and that loss and how that uh, kind of pushed us forward as, as a group. And we're hoping the same thing happens this year. You know, at halftime, it's just a, a one-point ball game. Your team was down 20 to 19. Then you return the opening kickoff for the second half down to the 20 yard line, and two plays later, that uh, you throw an interception off a tip. Do you think that was a, uh, one of the turning points in the game? I think it was the primary turning point. Yeah, uh, for us, uh, you know, we, we talked about at halftime uh, the fact that we were receiving the kickoff, and that uh, you know we we're going to go down and score and put ourselves uh, probably in, w w you know coming away with a six point lead, and. You know, we get that big return, which was unexpected. Earl did a, a tremendous job getting the ball down to, I believe, the 14-yard line. And so we're sitting there in the red zone. And then uh, I think play two, we throw a pick, and it just uh, really uh, sucked the wind out of our, uh, our sideline. And uh, suddenly momentum was right back in their favor, and we had a hard time recovering from that. You know, their offense was very productive with their ground game. They had two running backs with over 100 yards of rushing. What is it about their offense that makes it so hard to, t uh, to stop? Well, gr ground-oriented games like that, um, one, it's difficult to prepare for because the offense is so different from ours. So uh, replicating that during the week becomes a challenge. And then two, um, just the, the physical nature of play on their part, you know, got to get credit to them. Um, they had a, a very large offensive line, and um, they were content getting three and four yards to carry, which is what they did. Uh, unfortunately, that, that turns into seven, eight, nine-minute drives, and we had a hard time, especially in the second half, getting off the field. Uh, part of that was their efficiency on offense, and part of that was us turning the ball over. You know, your offense, you had to throw the ball more once you got down, but this week against Ravenscroft, are you going to seek a more balanced attack? I think that's always the case for us. We're, you know, we're always seeking to, to kind of be right around the 50-50 mark, even though we are a spread offense. I think if you look at any successful spread team, they tend to be uh, balanced in their approach. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, finding some of that balance again, and part of that is uh, not getting down uh, in a game uh, on the scoreboard uh, so that you can afford to spend a little bit more time running the football. You know, with a tough 21-point loss at Kerry, have you learned anything about your team that you didn't, you know, really know about before? Any Did adversity bring anything out? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's always lessons to be learned, and um, one of the positive things we take away from this past uh, this past week is the fact that um, that our kids never quit. Um, you know, it can be pretty easy once you're down 21 at the end of a football game to just throw in a towel, but our guys continue to play, continue to fight, and uh, th those were glimpses of character that we've been looking for. So, um, you know, there's certainly things like that that you can take away and certainly some practical things on the football field that you can take away like uh, you know an unfortunate reminder that turnovers uh, you know greatly influence the outcome of football games and um, you know we're going to see if we can't get that fixed and uh, the ship righted and um, 
and, and hopefully, you know, play a competitive football game against a good Ravenscroft team coming in uh, this Friday night. Speaking of Ravenscroft, you know, you had a big win over them last year, but they're one of your rivals, so you know they're going to be amped up for this game. What do you expect out of them this week? Well, they've got an extremely talented team. They've got a tight end that's heading to UNC on scholarship. Uh, they've got um, a very athletic quarterback and a lot of good pieces around them. So, you know, we're hoping that uh, despite the athleticism and uh, the success that they've experienced, that we can come out and um, really make a statement, hopefully early in the game, and uh, see if we can't find a win this Friday night before a great home crowd. Like you said, a great home crowd. It's family football night. They're expecting over 1,000 people at the tailgate. What's it like to have a game like that where really the whole community comes out to support the team? Oh, it, it, it's a blessing. I mean, my guess is there are going to be probably 3,000-plus people here. And um, there's nothing like being at home with a crowd like that, um, you know, standing behind the team. Uh, they bring an energy and excitement that you just can't. Uh, you certainly can't replicate when those stands aren't full like, like they have been. And so we're excited to have them. It's exciting to, to, to obviously sense the community support and uh, to see that on Friday nights. And uh, we hope to come out there and, and to give them their money's worth um, on the football field. Well, we're, cer we're, we're certainly looking forward to it, Coach. And join us next week as we recap the Ravenscroft game and look ahead to the next week. That's all for this week.